Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Super Metroid. In the last part we started off the game and now we're in Lower Brinstar, which has my favorite song in the game. I love this tune. There's a reason it's the intro song. Now, first off, we're gonna open up this missile door. Uh, we can only do one thing in here for now. We'll be able to do a lot more in here later. But the only reason I'm coming in here now is for this one missile tank. Uh, you can run over those dis disintegrating blocks, but that shutter will block you no matter what. Unless you abuse a glitch by the name of the Mach Ball, which is a weird little trick that you do when it involves running, jumping, and turning into a Morph Ball the moment you hit the ground. It's weird. I've only done it a total once, and it took me two minutes to do it, so it's honestly not worth the time if you're doing a speed run. Though it does allow you to get a certain weapon early. And by early, I mean by, like, technically five minutes. <laughs> and now we're in this area, Brinstar, which is really weird. <laughs> I've never understood what the point of this little area is. Well, artistically, it, uh, I understand it level design-wise. Now, those little blocks up there are how you're supposed to get this next item, usually, but if you abuse the wall jump like I do, you can get this missile tank about 40 minutes early. Well, actually, probably closer to a half hour in my case. Uh, there are other items in this room we can't get yet, but we'll get to that later. That orange door there can only be opened by a, a weapon we get, well, not much later, probably 20 minutes in the future. Either way, we got another missile tank right there. That's right in the open. If you're avoiding that, you are doing a low percentage run, in which case, have fun. <laughs> Actually, there are quite a few other different run throughs this game you can do. I've done a lot, be it low percentage uh, and such. And over here we get a new item for the series, well, starting from this game onwards at least, the charge beam. Hold the attack button down and you'll charge your uh, power beam. And it also allows you to do the pseudo screw attack where you charge your beam and then do a somersault jump. And what I mean by new for the series is, uh, we've seen the charge beam in pretty much other, every other Metroid game I've played aside from Metroid 2. Uh, that's because the charge beam wasn't in the first two games. Uh, now coming up here, at the very top of this room, if you head to the left, there's a little mini bomb pass- or morph ball passage you can bomb open right there, actually. Uh, to get to a save room, but I'm not gonna be saving until the end of the part. And in this room, you actually have to kill all three of these little wasp things. Uh, the pseudo-screw attack is the best way to go about doing so. Due- just due to the fact that it kills them in one shot, honestly. Uh, the charge beam, I do not believe, is a required item, though. Uh, in fact, since it's a Metro game, you can probably tell a lot of the items are optional, but either way, time for the first- or second boss, rather. This... weird thing... As soon as it shows itself, come on, is Spore Spawn. Uh, what he does is that he goes around in a little infinity motion, getting faster and faster, and faster the more damage you deal. However, if you stand right where I am right now and go to a Morph Bomb when he's close, he will never touch you. Well, usually. <laughs> Unless he decides to open up right in front of you. Uh, when, you when he opens up, that's when you start unloading missiles into him. I think he takes around 20 to 30 missiles to kill. Uh, if you run out of ammo, uh, the charge beam might be able to use to damage him, I'm not entirely sure about that. Eh, or you could shoot the little spores that are popping out of those little things in the ceiling to get some ammo. And it's, I was actually kind of disappointed with the way this battle went, actually, because in my test run, which I actually did somewhat for this game, at least until around 45 minutes in, I unloaded like eight missiles into him in one go. <laughs> And with this one, I was only able to get, like, one or two in it. That really made me sad. Although, a uh, fun little fact about this boss, actually. Uh, the theme for it would later be remixed for that weird larva fight thing that we did right before entering Ridley in Zero Mission. In fact, as you probably noticed, because we started the game off not in Brinstar like Metroid 1, but in Criteria. Uh, Zero Mission actually took quite a few of the areas from Super Metroid and added them in. Making the entire game quite a bit bigger, actually. 
Anyway, he's getting pretty pukey green cards, so that means he should be dying soon. However, this boss likes to tease me every now and then. Uh, if you got that certain item earlier, I meant that I mentioned by doing the mock ball trick, this entire boss is actually optional. Otherwise, you need to do it. In fact, there are quite a few secret breaks you can do in this game. Most of them with the wall jump, but... Eh. Come on, die already. You are so puke green, you should be dead. Come on. There we go, finally. Now, fun little fact, actually. If enemies die by turning brown like this, you can actually wall jump on them, at, off them, and they will vibrate. <laughs> I don't understand the point of it, but it's creepy, I suppose. Maybe. In fact, I think the spore spawn is actually the reason why Brinstar is so overgrown in the early areas, areas of it. And down here we get the Super Missiles, another new item to the series that we've seen in other games I've played. You select it and then you fire it just like the normal missiles. It has its own ammo count. However, the way they work is that they can open green doors and they are more powerful than normal missiles. They do about five times the damage of a normal missile, though I think there's actually a decimal involved in that. I swear there is. And it can also destroy super missile blocks, and missile blocks, I believe, as well. Pretty much anything a missile do, it can do better. Except for its ammo count. There's only a total of, I think, 40 or 50 in the game, as opposed to the 230 normal missiles. Uh, that, pa uh, that yellow door up there actually leads to the area of Brinstar we were in before, but we can't do anything with that yet. However, we can well jump up here, get into this place, and get this missile much earlier than intended. We're not supposed to get this until, like, the final stretch of the game. Oh, man. First playthroughs of this were terrifying, though. <laughs> Mostly because you get so lost. And doing a certain thing coming up really quickly. Uh, little bears like this, you need to shoot their little blue or green thing with missiles or super, uh, the power beam or super missiles. Uh, there is a glitch you can do involving the explosion, but oh well. Meet the noob bridge, by the way. You need to hold down the run button to get across that, so if you don't know there's a run button by then, time to learn that there is one. And now we're in this red version of Brinstar. Uh, interesting little fact, by the way. Uh, Metroid Prime 2 would actually remix the song that's playing this area for that underground water or underwater lab area thing that I really hated. But the remix was good. Though, admittedly, that's probably one of the only good things about Super uh, Metroid Prime 2 soundtrack, but, uh, I'll get to that when I eventually have to do that game. <sighs> now that it's a bad game, it's just long, drown out, and boring. Mind you, as I've probably said multiple times, boring games are worse than bad games, in my opinion. Anyway, with the wall jump, you can actually get up here much earlier than intended. Well, not much earlier, just a bit earlier than intended. To get this thing, which is this spazer beam. Spazer, spazer, spoozer, spazer, spazer. What this does is that it makes our beam go into three and it has a wider range overall. This is entirely optional. Like, I mean it. You don't have to get this at all. There is a required uh, power up later on, I believe, that has almost the exact same effect. In fact, when you get said power up, the spazer turns off. Also, this game suffers from what I like to call Sonic Adventure 1 logic. If you're even too deep in water, you'll be slowed down to a crawl. Why can't Metroid crawl? Eh, no. Also, keep in mind this little underwater tube here for later. We might be cutting back there in about four, five, six parts. And now we're in this elevator room. And welcome back to Norfair, ladies and gentlemen. with what is honestly one of my least favorite tracks in the game. In fact, I will say, this is the first Metroid to go for atmospheric music. I think it does it better than some other games, like... 
Prime 2, it's especially, but eh. Either way, we got an energy tank coming in here. However, we're also locked in because the door isn't flashing, or blue at all, actually. So we need to go through this little passage to get into this room to find a Chozo statue. But now we can't jump back up unless you do a wall jump. However, that's what these are for, the high jump boots. Now Samus can jump, I think, either twice as high or one and a half times the height of her original jump. I'm not sure the exact specifics. Either way, she jumps like she's in space, although that's a different item entirely. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Though it was in Metroid 2, so... Eh. And we also get a missile tank. Or, yeah, tank. Missile pods were, uh, Metroid 2. Also, you might notice on the mini-map in the top right, there's always a little dot whenever there's an item on the screen you're in. Now, it's at this point I'm actually going to cut back to the... Norfair elevator room, specifically up here. Because there's nothing else we can do in Norfair yet without taking some extreme damage. However, we can super-missile these blocks to get over here. Uh, if you don't have the high jump boots, you can do the bomb jump technique I did in the first part to get up there, but it's really tedious to do so. And welcome to a certain area that's named after a certain villain from Metroid 1, who may or may not be in this game. May or may not being a keyword. Zzz. By the way, I apologize if I sound kind of stuffy at the moment. I'm going through some sort of weird cold thing. Ugh. I love December, but... It, it does this to me. In fact, every season seems to make me sniffle a bit, except for summer. That just makes me sweat. Anyway, we're in this room now. However, there doesn't seem to be a way to progress on. Unless you know to bomb slash shoot that little crack there. In which case, you can. And now we're in this room. With the pre-boss music, as I've known to call it. And what the... Crane? You're looking kind of small. Uh, that's actually a reference to the original Metroid. Uh, in Metroid 1, I, since I didn't play the original one, I might not ever, I might eventually, I'm not sure yet. Uh, all the bosses were actually the size of Samus, including Crane, so that's actually a reference to that. And here we actually have the first recharge station, then probably one of the only ones I'm going to show off, aside from two areas later on, I think. The yellow ones refill your energy, the red ones refill your normal missiles, not your super missiles, which I find stupid, but oh well. The only place that can recharge your energy missiles, super missiles, and any other power-ups you get later on that have ammo counts is your ship. Which you can also save at as well. Also, this random guy's here, but he doesn't do anything. What I just did there is a bit of a glitch. I think it's called damage boosting. What it does, what you do is that you head towards spikes or any kind of hazardous ceiling or room element. Aside from lava and acid. And when the moment you get hit, you hold the other direction. She'll go skyrocketing in said direction. Anyway, welcome to the boss, which doesn't seem to want to appear at the moment. Oh, okay, there you are. With a giant uh, size boost since Metroid 1, however, since we played Zero Mission. No surprise, it's Kraid. Who is really easy. During the first phase, he'll stay down here. You have to shoot his eyes for him to open his mouth, which is how you damage him by firing missiles in. And after a bit of damage, he'll rise up. He's really easy. Although it's really another thing of disappointment. Uh, like I mentioned during the Spore Spawn fight that I took him out and like threw th uh, like seven missiles in. During my test run of the Kraid fight, I got like all five super missiles into his mouth in one go and he died immediately, but not this time. And that was great. He's still pathetically easy. There is, uh, for, for beating him, we get the various suit, which means we already got our shoulder pads this early in. Booyah! Though there is another reason we're taking out all the bosses, but we'll get to that when we get to, like, the second to last, if not final part. But yeah, now that we have the various suit, we can resist high temperatures. However, I'm cutting out of Kraid, though. Except for this room. Back towards the entrance, now that we've beaten Kraid, this room's open. Which has these annoying enemies. I think they're called leapers. But they'll start draining your energy, and they can only be destroyed by bombs. And that seems to be the only point to this room. However, there's actually an energy tank in the ceiling. So that's nice. And now we're done in Kraid. I'm actually going to cut back to North Fair's elevator. 
now that we have the various suit, we can enter this room and not take damage because any room that has a wavy background like that is a high temperature room. Just being in it with your normal power suit will damage you. Well, not just the power suit. There's another uh, thing later on that makes us immune to this stuff. The barrier suit also protects us from, or at least lowers the damage taken per second from lava. Not by much, though. <laughs> now, in this room, there's not much to do aside from a hidden missile tank right there. Sam is probably the only hero badass enough to dive into lava just to get a simple ammo upgrade. <laughs> Mega Man would die from this. And Master Chief from Halo? I wouldn't know because I don't play Halo. Mostly because I don't have a single Xbox system. It's also here, obviously, that we get the main part of Norfair, which is superheated. It's also in the next room, we actually get an area that was an inspiration to a certain part of Norfair from uh, uh, Zero Mission. This little weird, bubbly, Gemini Man-like area. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 3, we'll be checking out stuff in this part of the area after using said save room right here. See you guys then.